I'm Andy Wallace, Bugatti official pilot, and I'd like to show you what makes a Bugatti Chiron such an amazing machine. Everything about this car is extreme. Of course, it's incredibly fast, so the first thing you need, massive brakes, massive power, 5,000 horsepower's worth of stopping ability together with the air brake. The chassis, incredibly stiff, comparable to an LMP1 racing car, in fact. As we come round to the back, you can't help looking at the engine. A W16, eight litres, 1,500 horsepower, 1,600 newton metres of torque between two and 6,000 RPM. Unbelievable acceleration. Of course, none of that would be any good if you couldn't put the power onto the road. I still don't believe how this car can do it in first gear. Full throttle, no wheel spin. It's unbelievable. To get 1,500 horsepower, we've got four very large turbochargers. The problem with large turbochargers, they take a while to spool up. So we've got a unique system here, a two-stage system, whereby two of the turbos are actually closed off at low RPM. We force eight cylinders on each side through only two. This means that the, they spin up very quickly. You reach actually maximum boost with only two turbochargers. And then as the revs rise and we need more volume, we bring the other two in. You need 1,000 litres of air per second for combustion. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? The forces acting on this wheel when the car's at top speed, 420 kilometres an hour. From the centre line, by the time you get to the valve, this cap is subjected to 3,000 times gravity. So you can see it weighs absolutely nothing, two and a half grams. That's seven and a half kilos at maximum speed. Then the pressure and temperature sensor, it's 44 grams. That's 131 kilos at maximum speed. That's almost two of me. Well, fortunately, in the Chiron, it's pretty easy. Pedal pressure on with your left foot on the brake. Push the button. And there we go. Despite the staggering performance of this car, you can see straight away it's not a stripped out kit car. Far from it. All the materials you see in the car, very, very high quality, authentic materials. There's plenty of space. It's comfortable. Now, although we don't have this center screen, in fact, all the information that you'd normally find there is still available. Navigation, reversing camera is there. Um, techo, power meter. And in the center, you have this almost a jewel of a speedo reading all the way up to 500 kilometers an hour, which is always quite amusing. Now, from my years of uh, racing, the last thing I want to do is jump into a car that's pretending to be a racing car with all the compromises that that comes with. So it's not noisy, it doesn't vibrate. Uh, we've got the double glazed windows, for example. It's got boot space. It's got cubby holes everywhere. It's got this fine sound system with diamonds in the speakers. So that's enough talking about the car. Let's go and see what it's really like to drive. notice straight away as you drive the car, you pull away, it's incredibly normal. What does that actually mean? Well, you know, you're climbing into a supercar. You would think it would be a little bit more difficult to get moving or just to get comfortable, but straight away you feel really, really comfortable in the car. There are three normal modes plus the top speed mode. So if I run you through these modes, EB is the standard mode, the automatic mode. You can drive like that all day long. Um, from zero up to 380 but when you reach 180 it would then automatically go to the autobahn mode without you doing anything so at this point the car will drop the ride height 
break the car. It in fact goes down 20 millimeters at the front, one at the back. Suspension will be stiffer, steering program stiffer, and the wing will deploy to 10 degrees. So now we are in the autobar mode at all times, regardless of speed. Now what that does, of course, is drop the center of gravity. It also gives you more downforce, more stability, and it sharpens up the reaction of the controls. And also, if that's not enough, you can select the handling mode, where you get more downforce, more stability, and you can do this. And that is how you be a hooligan in a Chiron. <laughs> so, to those of you who say, yes, but you could make it more powerful or you could make it faster. You can always make something more powerful or faster, of course you could. But to build a real production car that's incredibly easy to drive is the difficulty. So what we've got here is an incredibly fast machine which does pretty much everything you expect of a car. It's a complete package. And that is the remarkable thing. Although these are normally the uh, air conditioning controls and seat heaters, if you push the bottom button for one second, you can bring up other information which you can choose. It's quite interesting because whilst you're accelerating, you really should be looking where you're going, not looking at the speedo. And afterwards, you can, you can glance down and see what you actually did. of this car that we'll look at today is this, the speed key. So if 380 is not fast enough for you, using this key you can lift that limit up to 420 and it's very easy to do. Pop the key into the holder, turn the key, the car is now going through a checking system to make sure it's safe to go 420 and once it's happy it's now done so it's written top speed on the dash. We're now free to do 420. as if it wasn't there. So that's 420 kilometers an hour. Easy, stable, secure. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this. There's loads more fascinating things I could tell you about the Chiron, but maybe next time. <laughs>